Psalms 122, and we're going to be in verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read that psalm there, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, about this psalm and what it's um, what it's speaking into our lives, what the Bible is actually teaching here. Book of Psalms 122. Verses 1 through 9. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, for the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for thrones are set there for judgment the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Let's open with prayer tonight. Father, uh, we thank you tonight, God, um, for your word. We thank you tonight for allowing us to freely gather here in this home, God, to come and gather in your presence, because we were glad when they said unto us, let us go to the house of the Lord on this Friday night. And so, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move tonight, God, as only he can. That, Lord, that you would take it beyond it anywhere that I can go, and that you would begin to minister into the lives of your people, God. We all come tonight with a hunger and a thirst, God, and not for the things of this world, but after your righteousness. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask you to speak to us tonight, and that you would have your way in this place, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. King David here is the author of this particular psalm or a song. Um, Psalm 122 is actually a song that would have been sung to the children of Israel during this time in history. And so, as we look at Psalm 122, we understand that... Let me, let me give you a little bit of background of King David, the tabernacle versus the temple based on where the presence of God was at and how it wasn't like how you and I can simply come to our church building on a Wednesday night and then come again on a Sunday morning and then gather here in our home on a Friday night and how we come together and we worship as a community. And so what had happened is if you understand the history of the exodus of the children of Israel is that through that time of their exodus they were given the Ark of the Covenant or where the presence of the Lord was dwelling at. It's the same place where Moses would keep the Ten Commandments in their form. They were kept in that box in the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of the Lord would be taken through that box wherever it went. And so King David at this time had established in Jerusalem a place of worship. And it was known more or less as a place of a tabernacle or a tent or a place where people would come to gather and come to worship the Lord. Now we know that King David would never be given the honor of building the temple of God. You guys understand that? You know that? It was because of the blood that was on David's hands as a warrior that God would not allow him to build the temple that would ultimately be the place where the children of Israel would come together and they would begin to worship the Lord. And so when he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord, he was talking about various pilgrimage journeys that Israel would take usually three times a year. They would come for three particular feasts known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And so these three 
particular feast or religious gatherings for which they would come together were all connected in one way or another to the exodus out of Egypt. And so what it was is the children of Israel would come back to Jerusalem into the house of the Lord and they would present their worship to God. They would hear the oracles of the word of God spoken into their life and much of it had to do with them remembering their exodus out of Egypt. And so that is much like you and I today. When we come to the house of God, we come with a heart of gratefulness. We come with a heart of praise. We come with a way of expressing our love to God, to hear the oracles of God, to hear the word of God, many times pertaining to our exit out of Egypt. See, we come to God, and we worship Him, and we praise Him, and we have such gratitude towards Him. Why? Because we know what we used to be, we know what we deserve, and we know what God has given us. And as a result, we have been released from Egypt, we are no longer bound, we are no longer held captive, and so now freely you and I can come to the house of the Lord. And so we ought to have that same heart, that same thinking that says, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And so tonight, we are not living as in the times of 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, when they would literally have to make what would be considered a pilgrimage. So no matter what community these people were in, they would make their, their walk, their journey into where the tabernacle of God was. And what a joyful thing this would be. And so you have to understand that they were only allowed to come a handful of times. And as a result, there was a joy, there was a gladness. And so tonight, I want to share with you a little bit about the thought of because of church being so readily available to us, sometimes we can actually lose the power, the excitement, and the zeal of what is actually taking place. When you hear about third world countries, when you hear about the communist China and the underground church, when you hear about the Christians in Afghanistan who can't freely worship, I bet you they can understand just what this scripture says when it says, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go to the house of the Lord. And I'm here to let you know, friend, don't ever take for granted the thought that we get to come into the house of the Lord. Don't you ever forget that it is a privilege and it is an honor that the God, the creator of heaven and earth has allowed us, has opened it up and said freely you can come and receive what I have to give on to you. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me come let us go into the house of the Lord. Many times people here in the United States of America have lost what that truly means. You get people that will miss church for no good reason, for no reason at all, to stay home just because they didn't feel like going that day. I, I, I can't understand that. I, I can't understand that not feeling like like you want to come into the house of the Lord. I, I can't understand how somebody doesn't truly know that to come into the presence of God is a privilege and an honor. And that in that place, the peace of God, the joy of God, the presence of God is evident. But yet we find people that aren't excited, that aren't glad when others would say, come. Let us go into the house of the Lord. What are the reasons for coming to the house of God? What are the reasons for gathering in a Bible study? What are the reasons for gathering together as a community of believers? The first thing I want to look with you at tonight is to hear God's precepts or His 
teaching or his law to come before the presence of God and actually hear what his word says. You know, the Bible says that in the beginning, that when the children of Israel were in Exodus and they were leaving Egypt, that God had commanded the people to sit their families down and to speak the word of God, to, to speak the things that he had taught them. This was before there were Bibles that were written and everything was done orically. Everything was done through remembering. And so he said to gather your family and to constantly teach them my laws. To constantly speak to them about my word. And so it's the same thing that we need to come to the house of God for today. We don't need to come to the house of God to be entertained. To be moved and swayed by, you know, a particular minister that knows how to move a, move a crowd. Because somebody has charisma and they know how to, you know, get people excited for certain things. It should just simply be somebody can come up and actually just read the scripture. Just read what the law and the teachings of God's word says. And then allow that teaching to fall upon your heart. So that we can then go and live out the very thing that God's Word teaches us we ought to be doing. The reason for going to the house of the Lord is to hear what God's Word is going to speak into your life. For your circumstance, for your day, for your issues, for your trials, for the direction that you need. But so many times... People come into the house of God. And they come religiously. And they don't come with the appetite and the desire to say, God, I need you to speak to me. I need to hear from you, from your word. Because the Holy Spirit will minister to your life through his word. But if you are attentive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, so many times... People come to church or they come to a Bible study and they are physically there in body, but spiritually they are checked out. They are not hearing what the word of the Lord is speaking. And I believe very strongly in the fact that when you come to this place, that if you are tuned in with the Holy Spirit, that not one of you in this place will leave the same way you came. But you will leave with the revelation from God's word. You will leave with the nugget of God's word. If your spirit is attentive to what the spirit of God is speaking. God's word, the Bible says, does not return void. But it goes forth. And it accomplishes what it was set forth to do. And so when we come to the house of God. We ought to be glad that somebody has said, open your calendar. On a Sunday morning, you get to come to the house of the Lord. On a Wednesday night, you get to come to the house of the Lord. On a Friday night, you get to come to the house of the Lord. And you ought to be glad. But so many people are still staying home. Like, why is there a handful of people that are not here on this Friday night Bible study? What are you doing that is so important that the only thing you can do is tune in and watch? When other people have said, I was glad when they said unto me. It doesn't say I was glad when they said unto me that let's go and watch it on a live stream. No, there's something that happens when we gather as a community of believers. There's something very different and dynamic that takes place. And so you can't stand, sit in your house and watch it on a live stream and say, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Because you have not come to the house of the Lord. You are watching what's taking place in the house of the Lord. But you are not doing what Psalm 122 describes as what is an extraordinary thing that takes place when we come. And we gather, and we come to the house of the Lord. Another reason and purpose for why we come to the house of God 
is to shout His praises. It's to glorify His name. To lift Him up for who He is. You see how we, we come together and we have a designated time of worship. Now I hope you worship in your own home. But chances are, you don't sit there for a good 30 minutes in your house on a daily basis and lift up praises to God. I'm not saying you don't, I'm not saying you don't pray. But when we come together in this corporate form of worship, this is what it is to be glad when they said unto us, come let us go into the house of the Lord and so that you and I can gather together and begin to proclaim Him as the King that He is. Begin to lift our hearts, begin to lift our voices, begin to praise God. Because He has brought us out of Egypt. He has brought us out of bondage. And you know, some people today, you're still struggling with the thought, much like the children of Israel did. You know, I, I understand the story of Exodus. I understand the story of them wandering through the wilderness. But here's something else I understand. These people were in slavery and bondage for over 400 years. Over 400 years. Do you know what kind of mindsets are placed upon an individual that has been in bondage from generation to generation to generation to generation? It is hard to break those strongholds. And there are many people that are still gathering in the house of God. And much like the children of Israel, it is hard for them to break through that mindset. They feel that they deserve bondage. They feel that there is no way out of bondage. They feel that they don't deserve this, and they don't deserve that, and they don't deserve that. And my friend, let me tell you, you need to have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is in your life. Because the Bible says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so you need to now walk in that freedom. Amen. You need to experience that freedom and that favor of God that God wants to pour upon your life. Stop thinking like the children of Israel, that they are undeserved of anything and they can accomplish nothing and they're just little and they can't do anything we need to stand upon the promises of God's word Amen. and so for that for understanding that we ought to be willing to come and shout and lift our voice and proclaim him as the king that he is step out of that mindset and when you step out of that mindset and you begin to walk in the office that God has called you to walk in, you stand at a place of confidence. Many times it is a place of confidence, not in yourself, but confidence in the Lord that allows you to lift your voice and make a proclamation. People with no confidence don't proclaim anything. They don't make any proclamations. And I'm not talking about confidence in yourself. I'm talking about having a confidence in the Lord. Psalms 47.1 says, Clap your hands for joy, all you people. Praise God with loud songs. And that's exactly what we do. We come to the house of the Lord, and we praise Him, and we lift up His voice, and we shout, and... You know, we may not all be harmonized and have it all together, but we just come and we say, I don't care what we sound like. That's right, amen. <laughs> we ain't here to entertain no one. I'm, I'm, I'm here to stand before an audience of one. Amen. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Now, of course, we can definitely do our best, but for the most part, we ain't here to entertain nobody. That's right. You know, when, when we're there and we're worshiping, we're doing what we do, I'm worshiping God. Amen. You want to join me? Go for it. <laughs> this ain't entertainment. Amen. The house of God has never been meant to be a place of entertainment. Yet we find that happening. Yes. It, it's, it's always um, puzzled me that 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 people will walk away from a time of worship 
and they will base it based on the talent of those that were playing. See, your worship to God can't be affected by whoever may be leading or directing. Your worship to God is individual. They may be leading the song, they may be directing the song, but what happens many times is, is people get emotional in worship. They, their, their emotion gets going over this or over that. Stop being so emotional and worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Because that's what God is looking for. That's what God is looking for more than anything, is a people that will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. David found gladness in going to the house of the Lord. There were some other things that were taking place when they would come to the house of the Lord. Verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me. So it's a, a time of fellowship. It's a time of unity. When David said, I was glad when they, when the group of people, when they came together and said, let's go to the house of the Lord. And I don't know how you feel, but, but I enjoy my brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord. I enjoy seeing you guys. I enjoy being united with you. I enjoy hearing your testimony. I enjoy encouraging you and building you and sharing with you and praying with you. I enjoy the unity in that fellowship. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord to do something that is bigger than ourselves. To lay aside your petty differences, your different ideas. Much like those that would come to the house of the Lord, they came from different tribes. Remember, the children of Israel were broken down into tribes. And I'm sure that as each tribe began to move out into different locations, they began to take on different cultural ideas. Although they were all Jews, based on the different places where they would then begin to bring up their families, they would adapt their own form of culture. And so when they would come into the house of the Lord, all these different cultures were being brought together to unite under one particular thing, and that was to worship the true and the living God. And so that is the same way with you and I. We all come from different cultures and different upbringings and different ideas and different surroundings and where we grew up at. And we have different ideas, different thoughts. But we collectively come together into the house of the Lord and we are united by one thing in our unity and fellowship and that is to worship the true and living God. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, I think we do a pretty good job of that. You know, although our church is predominantly Hispanic, we want more different people. Amen. We want everybody to come into the house of the Lord. We want different cultures, different races to come into the house of the Lord and worship with us. Amen. Yes. Because God is not a God of prejudice. Amen. And so are we united in our fellowship tonight. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, says, Do not neglect the gathering together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25 is telling you, Go to church. Go to church. I've given you an opportunity. That's what Hebrews is telling you. The house of God is open. And this is the way I look at it, right? God saves you, and He plants you, and when you finally find that place that you call home, you grow right where you've been planted. You begin to grow there, and you begin to be faithful to the things 
that the house of God where you are growing is offering unto you. Now it's okay on an off day, you know, if you want to go over here or go visit them and all that's good. You know, we're not we're not dictators, but the most healthy thing you can do is begin to grow where you have been planted and be faithful to the things God has provided you in your home church. Whether it be women's discipleships, men's discipleships, men's prayer meetings, outreaches, the things that God has allowed you to be a part of, I say this, begin to grow in those things. Begin to be faithful to the things that God wants you to be faithful in in your home church. United. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to a men's discipleship on Monday night. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to an outreach next Saturday. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go play a basketball game, the adults against the children <laughs> at the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me. Now, I may regret it, but I am glad. I'm excited about it. I haven't played basketball in about four years. <laughs> but I was glad when they said unto me, we are the family of God, friends. You know, I, I feel sometimes that we can even be closer than our own immediate families. Yep. Because... Some of us have our own immediate family that do not have faith in the same things we have faith in. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that we don't love our family more than anything and we want them to come to Christ. But in this moment, until they do come to Christ, we have more in common with each other. Yeah. And so when we come to the house of the Lord... The encouragement that you are going to receive and experience is going to be from the Word of God, from like-minded people that are heading in the same direction that you're heading. Now, your family may have good intentions, but many times they are not going to encourage you or direct you or advise you in the Christian way of thinking, in the way that the Bible teaches that we ought to be living our life. And so we ought to be glad when they say unto us, come let us go into the house of the Lord. We go through hardships in life. We go through trials, no matter where we're at. And it's just such a safe place to come to a Friday night Bible study, to come to a Sunday morning service, to come to a Wednesday night service, and begin to fellowship, begin to talk, begin to share the things that are taking place in your life. To know and to understand and believe that the people that you are sharing with are definitely going to bring you before the throne of God in prayer. That it's not just going to be left, it's not just going to be, you know, gossip or talk, but it's going to be people that are actually going to pray to the God of heaven, the one that is capable of changing your circumstance, the one that is capable of giving you peace, the one that is capable of saving the lost, the one that is capable of delivering those that are bound, the one that is capable of opening doors and closing doors, the one that is capable of all things is who we will bring you before us. I'll tell you, friends, these things alone ought to bring gladness to your heart when somebody says, get up, husband, get up, wife. We're going to the house of the Lord. It should never be, are you going to go? It should be, get up, we got to go. See, coming to the house of God should never be, ah, do you feel like going? Should we go? Should we not go? I understand work. I understand other commitments. I understand there are some times that things will come up in life. But we ought to be dedicated to being in the house of God because being in the house of God is where everything changes. Being in the house of God is where we draw our strength. Being in the house of God is where we hear His direction. If you're not coming to the house of God and you're not allowing this word to be spoken into your life, then you are being influenced by every outside voice that speaks to you. But when you come to the Lord, you come to His house.
something wonderful begins to happen. King David is talking about glorifying God when you come to the house of the Lord. Remember, these people would come from far distances a few times a year to make this pilgrimage to come to the house of the Lord. To them, it was a big deal. Do not allow our great access to the church and to the house of God to cheapen or diminish the privilege and the honor that it truly is to come into this house. I'm going to close here with this. When you consider everything that King David has said about his reasons for being glad of coming to the house of the Lord, you agree with his thoughts. Do you get excited with anticipation when you know that you are coming to the Lord? See, if we, like, skip a Friday because, you know, we had it off, like a few, a few weeks ago we had a Friday off, there was no Bible study, it didn't feel right. <laughs> Something just, you know, didn't feel right. Or if, you know, something came up and miss a service. As for me, something just felt, something didn't drive that, something just didn't feel right. I, I, I want to be in the Lord's presence. God, I want to, not to say that we don't pray at home and all, all that stuff, but I'm talking about when we gather as a community of believers. It's a wonderful thing, guys. It, it's an amazing thing. And you know what really ought to move our heart is when we're sitting there in church service and, and we see people come up and give their life to God. And, and we see redemption before our very eyes. You know, the other, the other day I was, you know, up there on the worship team and I was standing at my mic and Pastor Joe's son and his wife went up there uh, for salvation. And man, it, it's, it still to me is one of the most beautiful things that somebody can experience. Because I remember my experience. It was, it was just like that. They walked up to that altar, and you can just see brokenness, brokenness, unbelievable brokenness. And you can just see the beautiful healing of what God was doing. And, and you're not going to see that anywhere else. You're going to see that in the house of the Lord. And that just moves me, man. I, I was just like, Wow, and then to find out that they were both backsliders, and I, I began to talk to them after, just sharing some thoughts with them, just out of nowhere. And they began to share a few things with me, and it was like there was there was a kindred spirit there. I, I understood. I knew that feeling. I, I loved that feeling. I, I hated being broken, but I loved being embraced by God. And sometimes the only way you can feel that embracing is to walk through that brokenness. Now, I, I, brokenness was very difficult. I, I, I didn't like it. But wow, when the Lord wrapped his loving arms around me that morning when I came and said, God, I, wanna, I need to rededicate. I'm so full of shame. I'm so broken. I can't believe what I've done with my life. And God, I just need you. And when he just accepted me, when God just loved me in that moment, and, and, and the overwhelming shame and guilt that I was carrying, God just began to lift it off me. It wasn't anything that a man can do. Pastor Raymond, all he was doing was leading me in a prayer. I know he's just a man. He doesn't have any power to do anything over me. And it was the Spirit of God that was moving. And you will not experience that. You will not see that. You will not be a part of that unless you are coming to the house of the Lord. And those are the moments that we live for, my friend, is that when God says, I brought one more back, I've redeemed another soul. I've restored another family. I've healed brokenness. I've delivered men and women. I'm telling you, when I see that, I say, man, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord, because you cannot put a price tag on that. Amen. You cannot put a price tag on the beauty that comes with that. Amen. And so I pray and I hope that when you see those things happening, that when you see people come to the altar, 
and you see healing begin to take place, that your heart leaps with gladness. You say, wow, this is what it's all about. You know, there was a time when we used to love the destruction of human spirit. Or maybe it was just me and Donald. There was a time when we used to love seeing people get broken and seeing people get hurt. And then we used to live for those moments. We used to be a part of it. But I'll tell you, more than anything, I love to see the process of healing. I love to see God's presence moving in another man or woman's life. Because it always brings to remembrance in my life. It's nostalgic. It takes me back to that place. And it breaks me in that moment because I'm saying, wow, God, you're doing for them what you've done for me. And many times that's my prayer. You know, be praying with people and they need deliverance and they need healing and they're, they're stuck in their addiction. And the simplest thing I can say is, God, just do for them, Lord, what you've done. Deliver them, heal them, set them free. The same way you set me free. And so as I close tonight, I hope that you are glad when somebody tells you, hey man, tomorrow's Sunday. We got church. So this Sunday at prayer, I pray that you come with anticipation and excitement. And saying, God, what are you going to do this Sunday? How are you going to move this Sunday? What are you going to do with my life? What are you going to do with my brother's life and my sister's life? Those that need miracles. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight in reverence to the Lord. Father, we worship you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to give an opportunity tonight maybe some that may be watching that may not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior tonight. And as I shared with you a few moments ago, the testimony of what we experienced in our church, how we experienced many times, but it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, when the Lord comes in and touches a man or a woman and invites them into their, his or her life. From that moment on, heard the message of the Lord tonight, maybe going to church doesn't excite you, well that's because Jesus Christ isn't Lord of your life, when he's Lord of your life, the things of God excite you, the things that move God move you, so tonight I want to lead you in a prayer if you want to give your heart to Jesus tonight, I'm not sure who you are, what you've been through, what you've experienced, but maybe you've walked with God before and you're backsliding right now. You need to come home, friend. It's time. It's time to come home. So I want you to repeat this prayer with me. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight and I recognize that I am a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. So, Lord, I ask you tonight that you would come into my heart, God. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with the precious blood of Jesus and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Perhaps you were walking with God before, and so, Lord, I, I rededicate my life to you tonight. I need you, Lord. I ask you to forgive me for trying to do things in my own. I recognize just how desperately I need you in my life. And so Jesus, be Lord of my life. I ask you this tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight as we close this Bible study, I just pray that tonight as God's word was ministered into our life, that it would give you a, a greater understanding of, of the truth of what it means to come to the house of the Lord and how this Psalm 122 was written and how it wasn't such an easy task as it is for you and I. And as time goes on, we can take for granted 
the very thing that was such a great privilege to these people that would walk hundreds of miles on their pilgrimage just to get to the house of the Lord, just to get to the presence of God. And how easy it is for you and I. And so that we would never come to that place and it's just like, ah, it's no big deal to miss church. It's just church. It's just, it's no big deal. I understand work, I understand certain things, but I'm talking about when we make a conscious decision and say, I'm just going to stay home today. I'll just, I'll just watch it on the live stream. It's not an option, friends. It's not an option. If you're handicapped and you can't get out of your room or you're stuck in a hospital bed, I get it. Utilize the tools that have been given to you. But if you're healthy and you're just being lazy, the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to freely gather here. We thank you for your love that is in this place, for your peace, for your joy, and for your presence, God, that overwhelms us, Lord. And I pray that, God, that you would continue and bind us together in unity, God. I pray that, Lord, that you would continue and fill us with a zeal and an excitement, God, to be in your house, to watch the miracle of salvation happen before our very eyes, God. We thank you for the power of deliverance, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are a miracle-working, supernatural-moving God, and that we get to experience that Every time we come to the house of the Lord, we get to experience your might and your power, God. Give us a hunger and a thirst for your righteousness. Give us an appetite for your presence, God. That we would desire to be with you, to be in your word, to praise you, to lift up your name. Father, we pray tonight that you would just allow these seeds that were planted begin to grow, to begin to develop in our lives. So we honor you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give a little praise.